Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the fifth lecture of module 2 of the course called Game Theory and Economics. Uh, before we start this lecture, uh, let me recapitulate what we have done in the previous uh, lecture, lecture 4. Uh, what we have done is that in the previous lecture, we have examined what is the implication of altruism in situations like prisoner's dilemma. Uh, we have already discussed the prisoner's dilemma game, typically in a prisoner's dilemma game. Uh, the players have an equilibrium, a Nash equilibrium, where the payoffs that they get is less uh, than what they could get uh, if they had cooperated with each other. But they do not cooperate with each other and they try to free write, and that is why, since everyone is trying to free write, they are uh, pushing themselves into a situation, an equilibrium situation, nevertheless. Where, out, where the payoff of each player is less compared to the case where they uh, had not tried to free write. So, this is basically coming from the fact that people are uh, maximizing his or her individual payoff. We have tried to relax this assumption and uh, we have seen that if there is altruism, what we mean by altruism is that an individual cares not only about his own payoff, but also the payoff of the other player. And if that is the case, then we could get an equilibrium, which is the best uh, for everyone. Uh, that is the result that we got in the previous lecture. <coughs> Typically, we saw that if the degree of altruism is high enough, if people care uh, about the other player above a particular critical limit, then we can get that equilibrium, which is the best possible outcome for everyone. But if the degree of altruism is there, but it is little, then we get a prisoner's dilemma kind of situation where the equilibrium is what we call Pareto inferior compared to another uh, outcome. <coughs> we have already uh, seen that though this situation uh, is there, that uh, altruism could you know, uh, generate an equilibrium which is Pareto uh, optimal, that is it is best for everyone concerned. Uh, but altruism per se is not good. I mean there might be situations which is not like business dilemma like situation while, where altruism could in fact be harmful. Uh, and we have seen an example where in fact without altruism people were uh, getting an equilibrium which is best for everyone. But if there is altruism, uh, we get back to the prisoner's dilemma kind of situation where uh, the equilibrium is uh, it's an outcome where people's payoffs are less uh, than what they could get if they had uh, did not have altruism. Uh, so that is the main theme of the last lecture. Today what we are going to do is to consider some of the variations of uh, stag hunt. If you remember what was the stag hunt and what was the equilibrium in the stag hunt, so the stag hunt game again there are two players. And each player has two actions to choose from either to hunt the stag or hunt a hare. There is a single uh, stag in the forest which can be hunted if both the players cooperate and try to hunt that stag only. 
Uh, so, if both of them cooperate, they get 2 each. What is the alternative? Alternative is that any player instead of going after the stag could go after a hare because there are plenty of hares in that jungle also. Uh, if he gets the hare, he is getting a hare so it is not bad but it is not as good as a stag. So, suppose player 2 instead of going after the stag goes after the hare, he gets 1. What about player 1? Well, uh, it is such the case that if the other player is not going after the stag, uh, player 1 cannot alone able, will be able to uh, hunt the stag. So, he gets 0, he gets nothing. Similarly, if player 1 goes after the hare, he gets 1 which is worse than a stag, in which case player 2 again will be uh, left with nothing, he will get 0. And if both of them go after the hare, they will get their respective hares. So, this is 1 1. So, this is the game and we have seen that if we apply the criterion of Nash equilibrium in this game, there will be two Nash equilibria. One is uh, S S that is both hunting the stag and the other is hare here both uh, individually going after uh, hairs. Uh, this is an equilibrium because uh, from stag stag that is both going after the stag, nobody will like to go after a hair because if one goes after a hair, uh, then that person that player will be able to catch a hair, but that is worse than getting half of the stag. So, this was the story. Now, if I generalize this model a little bit and consider that the number of players is instead of 2 hunters, suppose there are n hunters, all right, and uh, actions as before. actions as before either to go after the stag for each player this is the case one can hunt try to hunt the stag or one can try to hunt uh, a hare what about the preference preference will change a little bit so it is the case that one nth of a stag is suppose is preferable to a hare. Now, if this is the case, look this is similar to the two player game because in the two player game also half of the stag was preferable uh, to one hare, here n is equal to 2 uh, on, in that case. But here we are taking the general case where uh, n could be could be any number, any positive integer. <coughs> now here, uh, what will be the Nash equilibria? Uh, let us from this game, two-player game. Uh, if we try to get some hint, maybe we should try for these two sorts of profile, where everyone is going after the stag and where everyone is going after the hare. So. Is it true that in this n player game, everyone going after the stag is an equilibrium? Let us see if this is an equilibrium. Uh, to see that, what we need to do is to see if there is a profitable deviation from this, uh, what is meant by profitable deviation is that from this action profile can someone deviate uh, and be better off. Now, deviation in this particular game can be only of one type, uh, either if everyone is going after the stack then you can deviate and go after uh, catching a hair. Now, obviously, this is not profitable because if one goes after a hare, 
he gets a hair but getting a hair is worse than getting one and a of a stag which is happening if everyone goes after the stag so this is a nash equilibrium similarly if i consider the other profile which might be a candidate everyone goes after the hair is it an ash equilibrium uh, again we i have to consider deviation for any player here every every player, player is similar so if i consider any player suppose uh, player i and he deviates suppose he deviates and he tries to catch a stag is that beneficial for him uh, the answer is no because if he goes after the stag he will not be able to catch anything because to catch a stag it must be the case that everyone tries to catch the stag uh, so alone he will be uh, getting nothing it will be a futile it will be a futile effort so deviation is not profitable in fact it is harmful so that's why this is again nash equilibrium so we have two nash equilibrium is there any other nash equilibrium so any other nash equilibrium is it possible and the answer is no because if i consider any other nash equilibrium then how shall that action profile uh, look like that action profile must have a mixture of s and h some players must be going after the stag at least one player should be going after the stag and at least one player should be going after the hare now if there is at least one player going after the hare then that means that the other players will not be able to catch the stag because to catch a stag you need everyone going after the stag so in that case it is futile for all these other players uh, whose number is at least one uh, who are going after the stag uh, their effort is futile because they could go after the hare and be better off so any profile will have at least one s and one h since at least one h is there uh, people going after the stag will get zero and there is there is at least there is at least one such person one such player uh, one such player playing s that is going after the stag and his action is a sub optimal he could do better by going after the hare so uh, this is not a nash equilibrium this profile that we are considering here we are thinking about whether this is a nash equilibrium or not is not a nash equilibrium because that person at least one person is there who could change his action from s to h and could be better off so therefore this action profile is not nash equilibrium so that is the proof that there is only two nash equilibria in the game where the number of hunters can be anything it can be any positive integer it can be more than 2 so that is uh, it what we are going to do of now is that we can consider another a little complicated version of the same uh, stag hunt case uh, let me tell you the question here <coughs> so here is the variant let me read out the question first consider variance of 
n hunters tag hunt in which only m hunters where m is greater than or equal to 2 strictly less than n need to pursue the stag in order to catch it there is a single stag assume that a captured stag is shared by the hunters who catch it uh, so this is the setup that you need not uh, have you need not uh, have all the n hunters going after the stag to catch it uh, if the number of hunters is less than n suppose this is m where m is greater than or equal to 2 uh, then that will be sufficient to catch the stack. Uh, now what is the question? Question is that under uh, part A our assumption is that as before each hunter prefers the fraction 1 nth of the stack to a hair. Find the Nash equilibria of the strategic game that models the situation. Let me uh, take you to another sort of game which is uh, similar to some of the games that we have seen it has two Nash equilibria and this is known as a hog dove game uh, this is given as a exercise in the in this powerpoint uh, here is the story <coughs> two animals are fighting over some prey each can be passive or aggressive so uh, number of players are two two animals each can be passive or aggressive so these are the actions one can be passive or one can be aggressive each prefers to be aggressive if its opponent is passive and passive if its opponent is aggressive. Given its own stance, it prefers the outcome in which its opponent is passive to that in which its opponent is aggressive. Formulate this situation as a strategic game and find its Nash equilibrium. Let me discuss another game before we finish this lecture. This is known as coordination game. <clears throat> coordination game is uh, can be thought of as a variant of the battle of sexes game here again like the battle of sexes game there are two players so players two people let us suppose and uh, like the coordination uh, battle of sexes game they are planning to go either to a boxing match or to an opera house however the actions are though the actions are like this preferences are a little different Here suppose in battle of sexes the, the husband and wife the two people differed on which is the better one to go. One pl player thought that boxing match is preferable to the opera and the other player thought that the opera is preferable to the box boxing match. Uh, here suppose both of them think both of them prefer the boxing match to the opera and both of them want to be together that that is remaining constant as in the case of battle of sexes so it is like this that in ob or bo the last two they are not together so that is the worst possible uh, for player one going to the boxing match together is better than going to the opera house together however this is the same case for player two also so his preference is not different
and the numbers we attach to them uh, will be like before 210. Then what is the sort of game that we get? The sort of that game that we get is known as the coordination game. So, BB is better for both of them, OO is worse and the worst possible is OB and BO. <coughs> now, uh, in this game, what are the equilibrium? The Nash equilibria in this game, uh, if I examine this game carefully, I will find that there are two Nash equilibria. One is BB and the other is O. That is both of them going to the boxing match together is a Nash equilibrium and both of them going to the opera house together is also a Nash equilibrium. Uh, though there are these two Nash equilibria, it is clear from this game itself that one Nash equilibrium that is BB is better than the other Nash equilibrium which is OO. Uh, but does that mean that this OO Nash equilibrium which is the worst Nash equilibrium which we defined as a Pareto inferior state and this is a Pareto superior state. Does that mean that Pareto inferior state uh, is not going to prevail? The answer is no. If I follow the definition of Nash equilibrium, of course, there can be a stable steady state uh, at OO. Each of the players is going to play O, though they both of them know that this is a worse situation than the case where both of them were playing BB. And this is reason, this is the, re the reason for this is that uh, I cannot make the other people, other player. Uh, act according to my wishes. I have command over what I am going to do, but uh, unified action is not considered in non-cooperative game theory, which we are doing right now. <coughs> so, if I know that player 2 is going to play O, uh, then the best possible thing for me to do is to play O. There is no other way and vice versa. Now, can this situation that we have discussed here that is a Pareto inferior Nash equilibrium. Is this realistic? Do people get into this kind of trap where they are in equilibrium, but this is not desirable? And the answer is perhaps yes. Uh, if we look into real life cases, we all may many a time find situations where people are stuck with actions which none of them wants to take, but still they do because others are taking that action. Uh, one could be this which we call coercity puzzle. What it means is that this coercity is nothing but the, the keys of a typical keyboard, Compute, maybe computer keyboard or maybe a typewriter keyboard, <coughs> Q, W, E, R, T, Y. These letters come on your left hand on the top. Now, this kind of keyboards that we use is not the best sort of keyboard that can be devised, can be designed. In fact, uh, when this sort of keyboard was designed, it was to reduce the speed of the typewriters people who used to uh, you know, type, their speed used to reduce because of this sort of this design of uh, typewriters, uh, this sort of uh, keyboards. Uh, one reason could be that most of the peoples are right handed, but in this keyboard, uh, the, the letters which we use most, for example, E, A, R, S, all of them come on the left hand. So, this is not the best keyboard that can be designed. This is in fact a suboptimal keyboard, but still people have continued to use this keyboard. Uh, and why is that? Because everyone else is doing that. So, 
a, each company which may be makes this computer machines and keyboards finds that everyone is buying this sort of keyboard. So, if I do something else which is might be better if everyone stuck to that better keyboard everyone would have been uh, you know better off. But I as an individual if I try to do something else my keyboard may not be sold in the market. So, I still stick to the 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 run of the mill keyboard which is an inefficient uh, keyboard and which is the QWERTY uh, keyboard. So, uh, the point is that if there is a Nash equilibrium which is uh, a Pareto inferior Nash equilibrium there is no way to rule that out as a steady state. It is a Nash equilibrium by its own right. Okay, so, we are going to do an exercise on this uh, topic of stag hunt. This is an extension of stag hunt. So, let me first write down the exercise and then we shall try to solve this exercise.
So, this is the question. Uh, let me read out the question. Uh, this is an extension of the stack hunt game and the question is the following. In an n hunter stack hunt, each hunter has capital K, a positive integer, units of effort, which he can allocate between pursuing the stack and catching hairs. Denote the effort hunter I devotes to pursuing the stack by E i, a non negative integer equal to at most capital K. The chance that the stag is caught depends on the smallest of all the hunters efforts denoted by minimum j e j. Hunter i's payoff to the action profile e 1 e 2 dot 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 e n is 2 minimum e j minus e i. Is the action profile E E E where there are n e's in which every hunter devotes the same effort to pursuing the stag a Nash equilibrium for any value of E? This is the first question, and there is a second part to the question, which is that is any action profile in which not all the players' effort levels are the same a Nash equilibrium. So, to uh, put the story in a succinct way, there are n players and what they are choosing is E i that is effort uh, level that hunter i puts to hunt the stack and E i is less than or equal to capital K. <coughs> and we know E i can be an integer uh, and capital K is also uh, an integer and E i is greater than or equal to 0. This is their action and what is the payoff? Payoff is given by the following. So, U i E 1, E 2, E n is equal to this is the payoff to player i. Now, before we go further, let us look at this payoff function a more uh, uh, considerate way. Here, what we are having is two of minimum of E j minus E i, uh, which means that given the effort levels put by all the hunters, we take up the minimum of those effort levels. This minimum effort level is let us say any value E bar and then pair player 1's payoff uh, from putting E i is twice E bar minus E i. And the underlying uh, story behind this is that if the minimum level of effort put by all hunters goes down, then the stag might escape their hunt and in that case they will not be able to catch the stag, which means that the payoff of the this particular hunter, hunter goes down from uh, putting any effort for the stag hunt. So, that is why E E bar which is the minimum of E j's is coming as a positive entry here. As the minimum goes up there is higher chance that the stag will be caught. And then there is a negative entry here which is minus E i and which is quite intuitive uh, more effort is put on the hunt of stag. Uh, it is worse the hunter is worse off in the sense that he has now less effort level left uh, to pursue the hairs. So, that is why minus E i is coming as a uh, variable in this in this payoff function. Uh, so, this is the intuition behind the payoff function. We have to answer two questions. Uh, first, 
is action profile e e e dot e there are n e's uh, in which every hunter devotes same effort to pursuing the stack a Nash equilibrium for any value of e. So, that is the first question and our answer is the following that for all e's all integral values of e less than equal to k uh, e e e is a nash equilibrium And the reason, the reason is for this is simple. Let us take any arbitrary, take any arbitrary such profile, this profile. Now, for Hunter I, the payoff. from this action profile is what is the minimum of all e's it is e itself. So, 2 e minus his effort which is again e and which is e. So, this is the payoff that he is getting uh, any hunter is getting from this action profile e e e. <coughs> now, uh, to say that this is a Nash equilibrium, we have to consider deviations. Now, for any player i, there could be two kinds of deviations. One is putting an effort more than e or putting an effort less than e. So, suppose i puts an effort E i which is E plus let us say x where x is positive and then x has uh, can take only integral values. <coughs> uh, now, in this case in this case what is the payoff of i it is 2 of minimum of all these e's which is again 2 e minus e minus minus of e plus x and which is less than e right because this is nothing but e minus x this is less than e because x is positive. So, that is why deviation upwardly or putting an effort more than the other what the others are putting is unprofitable. So, upwardly deviation is un profitable. Now, let us consider downward deviations. Suppose, I puts an effort E minus x where x is again positive. So, what is I's payoff? So, I spare off from this uh, new action profile will be how much minimum of all this which is 
2 of e minus x okay, minus of e minus x which is e minus x and which is again less than e. So, downward uh, deviation deviation in downward direction is also unprofitable. Hence, E E E E is Nash equilibrium for any integral value of E greater than equal to zero less than equal to K. So, this is the first part. There is another part, second part, which is saying that is any action profile in which is any action profile in which not all the players' effort levels are the same in Nash equilibrium. So this is the second part. Uh, suppose player I, player. I's effort level E i is greater than uh, let us call it E lower bar the minimum of E j right. Uh, so, player I is a player whose effort is more than the minimum of all the efforts put by all the players can that situation be sustained as a Nash equilibrium and we can we have to show that that uh, if that cannot be sustained as a Nash equilibrium uh, then perhaps players putting different effort levels cannot be a Nash equilibrium. So, here payoff of I is how much it is 2 e lower bar minus e i right because minimum of e j is e lower bar so that therefore we have 2 e lower bar minus his own effort which is e i <coughs> now this this is u i u i uh, rises as E i declines, as E i goes on declining this E y is go, will rise because we have a minus E i term here. Therefore, I will uh, have a positive increase a positive sorry I will have a profitable deviation if she reduces E i to E bar, because this will happen uh, this uh, this uh, payoff function is valid as long as E lower bar is less than E i. So, as E i goes to E lower bar this payoff is, go, is going to rise. Uh, so, any player whose effort level whose E is more than E lower bar the minimum uh, will profitably lower lower e i okay. 
therefore, there cannot be a na a Nash equilibrium where efforts are different. So, the only Nash equilibrium that there can be in this game is where uh, efforts put by all the players are same. So, that is the exercise. Uh, we shall do one example and then uh, close this lecture. The example is the following. This is also known as public goods provision uh, game. Uh, what is a public good? Public good is some, something which has been produced and provided to the public and I cannot restrict anyone from consuming that good. Uh, so, what happens is that suppose there is a road which is not crowded and in that road obviously, if it is constructed everyone can take make use of that road, but you need money to construct a road. Now, if I contribute to the construction of a public good, there is no way I can exclude someone from using that. So, here we have a typical case of free riding that I contribute, but everyone is using that. Of course, I am also using that road, I am getting some benefit out of it, but I cannot restrict anyone from using that uh, particular facility. Now, if that is the case, then will people contribute? under which conditions people will contribute or can there be a situation where uh, nobody contributes. So, this is uh, called the provision of public good and the problems related to that. So, question is the following. Let me read out the question. Each of n people chooses whether or not to contribute a fixed amount toward the provision of a public good. The good is provided if and only if at least k people contribute where k is uh, less than equal to n and k is greater than equal to 2. If it is not provided contributions are not refunded. So, which means that if I have contributed for the construction, but suppose not many people have contributed. So, in that case the good will not be produced no public good is there, but I am not going to get back the money. If it is not provided, the contributions are not refunded. Each person ranks the outcome from best to worst as follows. 1. Any outcome in which the good is provided and she does not contribute. So, this is the best possible for any person. Uh, second is any outcome in which the good is provided and she contributes. Third is any outcome in which the good is not provided and she does not contribute. And fourth is any outcome in which the good is not provided and she contributes. Formulate the situation as a strategic game and find its Nash equilibrium. So, this is public good game. So, players n in number actions, what are the actions either to contribute or not to contribute. So, contribute let us call it C and uh, not contribute. N C. And what about the preferences? Well, this is the interesting part. First option is that I am free riding over others. That is, other peoples have contributed. The public good has been produced. So there is the number of you know contributors is more than or equal to k. <coughs> there is no dearth of contributions. But I have not contributed, so I am getting I am getting some benefit without contributing anything. 
So C that is I have contributed and let us call this P. P is standing for public good is provided that is number of contributors is greater than equal to k. So, this is the first uh, outcome that I shall prefer, this is the best outcome for me. Uh, so, uh, we are more or less uh, running out of time, so I shall finish this lecture right now and we shall discuss, uh, we shall pick this up this problem in the next lecture. Uh, so, that is all for today. Thank you. The first question is, in stack hunt game, if both players are worse off in a Nash equilibrium, why does it remain uh, an equilibrium? So, uh, the basic idea of Nash equilibrium is uh, being question here. So, in stack hunt let us remember how does it look like, there are two players one and two, two hunters. Uh, if what is being asked is that suppose there is a Nash equilibrium which is Pareto inferior where both players are worse off in a Nash equilibrium then why does it remain a Nash equilibrium. So, we have a Nash equilibrium here <coughs> which is H H payoffs are 1 and 1. It is uh, here the players are worse off than say STST uh, where the payoffs were 2 and 2, but still this is a Nash equilibrium by its own right. Why? Because go back to the very definition of Nash equilibrium as long as player 2 is playing H right as long as 2 plays H best action for 1 is to play H and vice versa. So, though here both players are worse off, it is a Nash equilibrium. Consider an n player stag hunt game if a one length of stag is preferable to a hare and n hunters are required to hunt the stag, what are the Nash equilibria? So, uh, n player stag hunt and n are needed. To hunt the stack. What I propose is, is that following are the Nash equilibria. This is a Nash equilibrium, and this is also a Nash equilibrium, and in all two Nash equilibria. Uh, the reason is that if everyone goes after the stack there is no reason why any individual player will go after the hair because one hair is worse than one nth of a stack. So, that is why this is a Nash equilibrium. Why go everyone going after the hair is a Nash equilibrium because from here if anyone starts to go after the stack she, she will not be able to catch the stack. So, she will get 0 here at least she is getting one hair which is better than uh, getting nothing. So, both are Nash equilibrium. Uh, is there any other Nash equilibrium? No other Nash equilibrium. Why? 
because in any other profile where uh, at least one player is going after the stack right uh, there could be more than one players going after the stack in such cases the stack will never be hunted uh, because you need all the n players to go after the stack uh, but that is also ruled out because this is taken care of here so the number of stack hunters is here more than 0 but less than n uh, which means that these players who are going after the stack will not, not be able to catch the stack so it is better for them to go after the hair that is why any other profile is not an Nash equilibrium. Describe the hog dove game and find its equilibria. The hog dove game is the following game I am just drawing the P of matrix as usual there are two players and their actions are being act aggressive or being passive. If both of them are aggressive they get 0 0 both of them passive they get 3 1. Uh, sorry if both of them are passive they get 2 2 if one is aggressive the first player is aggressive the second player is passive they get 3 and 1 and vice versa. What is the Nash equilibrium here or what are the Nash equilibria here? There are in fact two Nash equilibria here one is aggressive passive and the other is passive aggressive that is this and this you can check that uh, there is no profitable deviation for either of the players from these two equilibrium profiles. 